Bless us, everybody. I just want to come on real quick and share a quick word about a wonder working God. You know, and the Bible says, you know, God, who do they call that wonderful counselor? You know, he's a alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. And then the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I was just thinking about how earth, wind, and fire, they got a song called Be Ever Wonderful. Stay as you are. Because God has made us in his likeness, in his image. So he intended for us to think like him and to um, love like him. You know, like like Jesus, it also says, you know, put this, um, let this mind be in you that also is in Christ Jesus. And um, what's the other scripture? Let this mind be in you that also is in Christ Jesus. And put on the mind of Christ. You know, because we as people sometimes, I don't care how long you've been in church, or you are, whatever your title may be or who you are or how strong you may be in Christ, there's some times you're going to get weary. And feel as if you not who God called you to be. And, and a lot of times we allow our emotions to dictate how we feel. And I never heard in the Bible or never seen any instances where God felt bad that day or just didn't feel it up to it or he felt some type of way. Because he's the same today and the same yesterday. And so he's always there. He's everywhere. I'm talking about a friend of mine, you know, because if you really look at a wonder working God, just think of us that was, you know, had a, a problem with alcohol like me, you know, and I'm like, when I was drinking, I couldn't never really fan of me not drinking and, and, and living as if that was the only way to live or be sober, <laughs> You know, because that's why I drink to, you know, cover up the fact that God called me to be who I am today. And that's a spokesman for him, not more so in words, but in my life. You know, like the Bible says, go into all the earth and preach the gospel. But I like to say, go into all the earth and live the gospel. Because the Bible says, by their fruits, they shall be known. And so we can say this and that, I'm so-and-so, I'm this and that, but our actions show totally different. But what people are looking for and seeking in the world today is somebody they can actually see, something tangible. That's almost like if you see somebody homeless, you know, you can say, well, hey, I'm going to come back tomorrow and bring you this and bring you that. Or or you, you could give them a book or something. They're like, okay, that's fine and dandy, but I'm hungry right now. You know, I need shelter. You know, so that that book is cool, but, you know, they need what they need. And so <laughs> that's the thing with, with God. You know, he, he wants what he wants and desires from us the same as we want from him and desire from him. You know, it's, it's almost like our natural parents. You know, if, if we expect to get our allowance, you know, when we was kids, we had to do what was necessary. You know, we had to do dust, dust, this and that. Just like um, God told Moses, you know, build the, um, the tabernacle according to what's written on the wall. So our parents had natural expectations of us, you know, to get our allowance. So does God. You know, even sometimes we don't match up. God is still a wonder, wonder working God. You know, just thinking <clears throat> how, how, much, excuse me, how much of a hot mess we was and still are. <laughs> You know, God worked that wonder to get us where we're, we we might not be to the, the the degree of hot messiness that we was. I know that's not a word, hot messiness, but I'm going to use it today. But anyway, you know, just look at your life from where you come from. You know, I was reading something yesterday where it says, you know, when you get ready to complain, just think about how you have more now than what you had than when you started out. You know, whether it be in Christ or life, you know, because the wonder working God will put you in a place where your mind is no longer tormented and you feel as if you're um, incapable of going on that day. Because sometimes, you know, it's like especially us as ministers and and um, pastors and apostles, whatever. I'm talking about true ones, not just with a title, you know, us that can go on without that title, you know, and, and really doing effective ministries. I mean, sometimes it takes me two days to really 
go back to being myself because it's like once I get done when I leave the prison, I just don't I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to sit there in my chair and just, you know, I don't know, reflect, you know, because when you pouring out, when people are actually being healed and delivered and being put up on game and and God is working that wonder, not saying that we did it, you know, ourselves, but God is working that wonder in us, which they call a gift that our God given gift. And so that's why he put it in us. So therefore we can go out and disperse it to others. So there, therefore they can take play, um, take, um, they can take, you know, and, um, for themselves, they can partake of the wonderful change that has overtaken us, but can also overtake them as well. And so, that when you start letting that wonder work in you, you know, other people are, are changing and they're, they're opening their eyes up to the, um, the abilities that they have and no longer, um, being limited by their incapabilities of what somebody may label them as, as having, you know, that's a, a big thing, you know, people trying to take, you know, what the wonder working God has put in us and try to take it out and try to make it seem like that we're not who God called us to be. So therefore they could feel superior. And that's not what it's all about. Nobody's superior than God. So we're all human beings striving to be all that God called us to be and to allow the wonder working God to continue working wonders in our lives until he comes back. Because that's what it's all about. I don't care how many wonders you may have worked or God has worked in your life. He still has yet more wonders to do because this is a never ending journey. And so it's like, you know, you may feel like you on top of the world right now, but that could be snatched from up under you in the blink of an eye. Especially if you think you doing something because you got a little money and possessions, that really is not nothing. You know, you can naturally do things. You can sell dope and get that. But when you allow God to, when when you are be ye trans being being ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's a wonder working right there. You know, because you know how many people, as um, there's more um, unreported cases of mental health issues than there are reported cases. You know, so there's a lot of functioning mentally ill people in the earth today. I'm praying for folks, prophesying, preaching, you know, not to mention supervisors at your job. And you just wonder, what in the world make him think that was all right? The mental illness. But when you allow the wonder working God to work in your life, that could be gone just like that. You know, like the little boy in the in the Bible, they said that his father said he often throws himself in the fire and have fits and convulsions. You know, Jesus touched him, you know what I mean? And and the spirits left him immediately. You know, it's like the man that in the cave, you know, had or the people, the Bible said this was that trips me out. The Bible said the people walked around him. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty sure, and everybody know there's a church on every corner, so I'm pretty sure it was probably church people because they didn't have the power or they didn't allow God's wonder working um, ability to work in their lives, you know, because they wanted to appear to be somebody. But when the Spirit saw Jesus, the, the Bible said he ran to Jesus because he recognized help. You know, this is some... uh Somebody that the wonder has worked in. So I know he could work wonders in my life. And the Bible said the spirit was cast out of him immediately. And, the, and, then, and then the Bible said he was sitting there dressed and in his right mind. If that ain't what you call a wonder working guy, I don't know what it is. You know, and then the people got upset because they didn't want to see no God's wonder working ability in their life. When Jesus cast the spirits in them pigs, you know, because that was the, them people's change, you know. That was their way of living. So the Bible said they got together and conspired that they wanted to kick Jesus out their region. So basically that's what's going on today in a lot of these churches. They don't want the wonder working in their church because if the wonder start working, God's wonder start working in their church, people going to wake up and realize, hey, this pastor is not of God and, and be gone. So they're like, look, hey, Jesus, we want you out of our region. Don't come back. We fine. You know, being bound, you know. We don't want no wonders worked here. And so that's what it's all about. And so in order for the wonder to work in your life, you have to accept and be open to change. 
You know, and the only way you can change it is if you make a conscious decision like, look, I want this wonder working God to work in my life because I'm tired of being the way I am. I'm tired of thinking the way I am. I'm tired of walking the way I am. You know, and so it's like, man, once you start, you make that conscious decision, I'm telling you, like Tremaine Hawkins said, a wonderful change <laughs> will come over you, you know. And so that's what I just want to come on and share real quick because, I mean, there's so much to be done in our lives, but we got to allow God to finish the great work he's begun in us. So therefore, others may see our good works and glorify the Father because that's what it's all about is glorifying God and, and, and bringing people to him, you know, because once people start seeing the wonders worked in others. I mean, that's what's going to really wake the people up. That's almost like street people. They don't have no money. They grew up in the ghetto or their mom or our dad really wasn't up, you know, and I'm going to say, you know, really wasn't, didn't have it to where, you know, they was limiting the clothes and shoes that they had. So they see somebody riding around in the bins. They're like, uh-oh. Let me see what I could do to get down with that because I need some change by any means necessary. And so there's a lot of hurting people in the world today. I mean, more than you would ever think. If you really just pay attention to people, like the Bible say, be vigilant and sober-minded, you will see how many hurting people there is on earth today. And so, therefore, when you see how many people in the world is hurt today, that really should allow us that's, that's really doing effective ministry or anybody to call themselves doing ministry to allow the wonders to work that much more in you because we can't operate on the level that we need to operate still being in us. You know, there's there's no way possible we can go to another place in him remaining in us. So we got to do all we can do to allow the, the God's wonder work and ability to work in our lives. So therefore, we can be that much more help not only to ourselves but others because people are hurting out here. And you know, one thing I recognize, you know, I can't help every, everybody can't help everybody, but somebody can, everybody can help somebody. And just imagine if everybody allow God's wonder work and ability to work in them. And then they, um, what they call it, play, pay it forward to somebody else. You know, just imagine how much more the world would be a better place. So I just want to come on and share that real quick. Be blessed. Peace.